Alright, welcome back. Um, as you can see, I'm on the Flying King here. Uh, I want to get try to get this fuselage done today. Uh, today's video is all about pull poles. I mean, they're, they're great uh, um, for setting up linkage. You can do it on your elevator rudder pretty easily. Um, rudder is more common uh, just because of the angles involved. Um, you can do it on airlines. Uh, the uh, antic up there's got it on airlines and rudder and elevator but anyways we're gonna do what's more commonly known as you know putting pull poles on your rudder why would you choose pull poles over a single linkage well tail heavy planes it saves a lot of weight um, I used to do it a lot because of uh, expense it's not an expensive thing to do um, I'm gonna be using a 440 pull pole setup on this it's probably a little a little overkill for this plane but uh, it's what I got on hand I thought I had a 256 setup that's what I would use if I had it so you know this is more for uh, um, bigger scale planes you know 90 size stuff and up um, especially if you're putting uh, some extreme throws on it uh, 256 works fine for a 60 size plane on down um, so anyways the reason why it's cheap is because the only thing you really need from Dubro is these 256 threaded couplers here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, part number 201. These are for 256. They also may make them for 440. It's going to be kind of hard to show you. I'm not going to open the package up. But basically this is a threaded, a short piece of threaded rod here. And it's got a little hole in the back. And you can use that to set your pole pulls up. So you can get some brass tubing to make your crimps with. And for wire, um, you do not need to use solid strand wire. It helps, but uh, I used to go down to my fishing store and buy, they, they sell it in bulk, and you can get leader, leader line. And, uh, you know, spider wire, stuff like that works just fine. Um, you know, and then a piece of brass and a, a clevis on on uh, both ends and you're all set and ready to do some pole pole linkages so just keep that in mind that you do not have to uh, do not have to buy the, the setup I don't know what these are anymore uh, this was eleven dollars I'm sure the price has gone up it's been sitting on the shelf for quite some time so uh, I understand a lot of you guys probably already know how to do this so this is more of a how to uh, step by step, I'll show you how I do it. One trick that I like to do when I'm uh, setting up linkages is I take a hardwood stick, clamp it to the surface just like that, and that way it's it ain't going nowhere. And then, uh, so we're gonna open our package up here. I. Uh, you can uh, do your end crimps several different ways here. This comes with everything to do it with, so we don't... That's the nice thing about the kits, is you, you don't have to buy anything else. Uh, this is how they recommend doing the crimps. You can see you go through, back around and back through again, and then crimp on there. That's the way I usually do it. You do not need to put um, clevises on either end, these are metal, this is what comes in the kit. You can, but you do need adjustments, so we got them, we're going to use them. This comes in a nice little package here. You just open it up, like so, it's got a rubber band on the inside of it to hold it all together. Okay, and then so what we're going to do is, this is one of the little crimps that they give us. Oh, that's probably an eighth inch in diameter. You can use brass, you don't have to use steel. You can buy those at the uh, fishing store too. I need a way to crimp. Let's just grab the red pliers here. Probably should get you guys in here a little closer to what I'm doing, just so you can see how to make one. We'll go through the tips on making one, and then um, 
and how to route it. it should be good. And a little nut. And this. Over here. Alright. So you're going to throw your sleeve on. And then run your wire into here. Like that. Okay. Give you some extra. And just like the directions say, this stuff's a little stiff to work with. Go through. I like to form it a little bit like that. Okay. And we're going to go back around. This can be a little tricky to do. <laughs> As you can see. See where I'm. It's in the camera here. See how I form it a little bit? Back around. Second uh, wire can be a little a little cumbersome to get in there. There we go. Pull it tight. Let's see how that looks. Might be a little too tight here. Imagine trying to do this on the airplane. It's going to be, it's always fun. It's always a challenge to, uh, get it through there. Crimp her down. <clears throat> yeah. And then we'll get a pair of snips. These will flex over time and stretch within the first few flights. Okay, there's that. And I don't know if our heat shrink is probably not going to fit over that. Nah. I'm too worried about it. I usually don't run heat shrink. You can to tidy it up a little bit. But, uh, go ahead and run our nut down on there. Remember what I said about linkages, that you don't want to run metal on each end, unless you got a lock nut to lock it down on. These will vibrate a little bit in there. Okay. 
And then I need a screwdriver. And I'll just pop this apart. Like so. Okay. Like I said, this does not require a whole lot of throws, so we're gonna go right in the middle. Okay, like that. Now here's the part where a lot of people get screwed up at. You need to cross the lines for the most part. So maybe, well, I don't think we're gonna be able to on here. Let's see where our entrance hole is going to go. So what I do is I run. I know this is kind of hard to see here, but. I try to run a, a, the line to where, about where the servo is going to be at. It ain't got to be perfect, but close enough, you know. And then make a mark where it intersects at. And that's where your entrance hole is going to be at. You know, and it's going to be, you know, we're going to go straight, right? So, right about there is where we're going to pop a hole at. Um, to pop a hole, I guess uh, I'll grab my drill bit. Where where that went. And, uh, I'll go over here playing with it. Getting busy in here. Okay. And we want enough to go, obviously, the distance. And a little more. They give you. They give you plenty of of wire. You could probably do a couple planes with, depending on how big they are. With wire. That's why it's a good idea to buy those rig, rigging clevises to. Uh, see how lucky I'm gonna get here. Did it go all the way through? Probably not. That's a pretty good sized fuselage. I should be able to stick my hand down in there. This is the other nice thing about all this is um Yeah. It's like right there. <laughs> like if you have a completed plane and you uh it has no rods in it, no no uh Nice, nice big airplanes, right? That's oh, my plane up here. Oh, I want that tail rest. Okay, there we go. I know you can't see nothing here. So if you have your if you have your uh, um, your if you buy a used plane and you need to run uh, linkages to the back and they they can give you anything to deal with, this is one way to uh, um, get around cutting holes in the in the covering of your you know newly purchased airplane. So, anyways, gonna do the complete opposite here. We're not too worried about. Um, we're not. I'm not super worried about uh um yeah you know to uh
I don't remember where I was going with that. Don't you hate it when that happens? I'll remember later. Oh, servo centering. Not worried about getting the servo centered at this point. Just make sure your arm is straight across. You know, that you'll be able to adjust it later. Okay, so we got that set up. And I'm going to go ahead and put... We're doing the... We're doing this side. So we're going to put it over on the left side. The reason for doing that is so that way when the servo is operating, you won't get any slack on one side. At least that's the theory behind it. Whether or not it works or not, I don't know. Some some of mine come out, they don't they, they, they stay tight. Other ones they, they loosen up. They go loose when So you can take that as you will. As long as once the tight the side that is pulling is tight, you're good. Okay, so basically again I just I just assembled this and I'm gonna loop this around. I need to leave myself quite a bit of thread to be able to pull these tight. You know, because like I said, they're gonna loosen up. We're gonna take this out and do this another way. I act like I haven't done this. I haven't uh been a while since the set pull pulls up. <laughs> Now I thought, oh, good idea. Let's do it on camera and show you all how to do it. Yeah. And on this, I am going to go all the way out to the end. We're going to do this this way. it does help if you have a radio set up so that way you can work against the servo and again I'm going to put the pin I always put the pin down through it through it on you know like that's just that's personal preference I think that'll work just fine I got to remember we got to have room in here for push rod for the steering too so let's just go all the way out okay and then we'll do another one here while we get it apart a lot of guys will run um like scale airplanes they have a a pull pull to a bell crank inside the fuselage and then from the bell crank to the servo for the rod so you don't have to go direct to servo these servos are way overkill they're metal gear and uh, um, way overkill for this application but that's what we got all right all right so once again I want plenty of thread engagement but I want plenty of room to I don't know if you can let's see if that'll focus right there of course it ain't gonna focus but I got plenty of thread out here so I can tighten these up as we get some slack in the uh, like in it, making sure the servo is at a 90. Uh, you can see that right there, making sure it's 90 to each other. And then I'll thread our coupler on. Through the hole here. Oh, well. and then basically, I'm just going to pull this tight. Now, I'm pulling. I want to make sure that I don't pull the rudder. Um, 
you know, deflected at all. So, you know, you can always, you can always, um, you know, tighten it up later, you know, depending on how loose it comes out. Okay, so here's, here's a quick trip tip too. If you put a little kink in the cable here, I don't know if you can see that or not. You guys think of my t-shirt. See the little kink I put in there? It's holding. I mean, I, I, there's no, I mean, granted, it's really loose, but I can let go of it. I don't have to hold the tension on it, if that makes any sense. Um, so, yeah, you know, and then we will pull this through. Like I said, making sure we're not moving our arm. We can get a little bit more play out of there. This is where, like, manipulating it with your fingers, uh, screwdriver, pliers. This is the right way, correct? No, we moved it. There we go. And I'm just tightening up my thing here. That's pretty good. Yeah, see, it can be loose. We'll tighten it up. We got lots of room to tighten up here. And then, crimp on that end. Crimp on that end. And there you go. That's all there really is to it. Notice I didn't leave it back through. You don't have to do that. I've never had one of these pull out. Maybe, uh, um... You know, after time, you know, one is let go, but, uh, I've never, I've never personally had one, uh, had one pull out, so, yeah. But anyways, that's how you pull pull. I'll get the, uh, I'm going to do the same to the other side, and then, uh, um, and then I'll, you know, we'll, we'll do the adjustments on it and get this nice and tight. Uh, you know, you, you don't want it that loose, but, you know, you can... Tighten it up. I'm gonna have to uh kind of add it tighter than that. Anyways, we'll get her tight. I wonder if we're loosening it up on this end. Yeah, a little bit. We'll get her tight and you know usually once you get through a season uh don't have to go back through and tighten things back up again it usually stays pretty tight so anyhow there's your uh how to on pole poles i'm gonna get the other side back or other side done off camera here and uh i'll bring you back when uh we get things operational here all right so i got the uh, radio temporarily installed with a battery and it's on up there i'm gonna go ahead and throw my 850 tactic in uh, unfortunately, they don't make these radios anymore, and they are my favorite. I've owned, uh, I got several of them. But anyways, on with the pole pole. So, anyways, look at the, got really good deflection there. Here's the elevator. Probably way more than I need. I wasn't expecting that much. So, anyways, believe it or not, I didn't have to adjust these at all. They're, they're tight. What you want to do is grab all to the back and just see if you can move it. If you can wiggle it, it's too loose. But you don't want to be hearing the servo strain either because putting strain on the servo on the drivetrain um, will, uh, you know, cause the, the servo to jitter. It could cause battery um, voltage problems, you know, you don't want to lose your battery while you're flying it. We spent, you know, three or four months building this thing. Hate to see it go away in a hurry. But, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not 
it's making a little whiny noise, which they've done. It's not under load at all. And, uh, you know, they're ball bearing metal geared stuff. So again, way overkill for something like this. If, if I didn't have those laying around and, uh, um, with as cheap as they were, I would be putting standard servos in here, probably 3004 from Futaba, which is a ball bearing nylon gear servo, um, or a high tech equivalent. I'm starting to switch more over to high tech now. I used to run them a lot back in the day. Uh, started running Futaba just because of availability. And then, uh, but now that I can order, I got to order stuff in. So I'm going to be high tech makes a good product. You don't need to go overkill. I see a lot of people saying, ah, you know, Metal Gear, everything. <laughs> no, you don't need that expense. You know, granted, these were cheap. And they're like, I don't know, 200 inch ounces of torque. Way overkill for this kind of plane. But it's, like I said, there again, it's what I had laying around. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and finish this video up with this. And uh, I got some adjustments to do on the uh, throttle linkage. Uh, that was the only place that I've had some issues with, so I think my inner my outer rod's a little too long, so I gotta take it apart, snip it a little more, so I get a little more throw. And the throttle, you're always you gotta mess with it to get the right linear throw to it, anyway. So, anyhow, uh, so there it is, pull poles. Great, great, uh, great option for push rod material. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you would, helps out the channel more than you would realize, and we will see you on the next one.